The Reserve Bank of New Zealand shocked everyone and hiked interest rates by 50 basis points. Did you get that? 50 basis points after already delivering the most aggressive interest rate hikes in the developed world. So what does this mean for New Zealand house prices? It means total smackdown. <laughs> I'm Biko Konstantinos and that's what we're going to talk about today. If you like traveling, why don't you give this video a like? Check out my Eiffel Tower. And if you enjoy independent commentary and analysis, consider subscribing to my channel. What do you have to lose? Accept your valuable time, which I do take seriously. So just on Wednesday, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand hiked rates by 0.5 of a percent to an official cash rate of 5.25%. Now that's the cash rate, meaning that actual mortgage rates are at least 2% higher, which means that variable mortgage rates in New Zealand are now over 7% which is bloody high when you consider how expensive house prices are and how first home buyers have to get massive mortgages just to get into the market but if you have to get a massive mortgage and then pay over 7% interest that's a recipe for disaster but the main reason I was so shocked is because the day before the Reserve Bank of Australia decided to pause their interest rates at 3.6% so I'm expecting many central banks to maybe start to pause because they might be near the peak, but New Zealand comes in with an ultra aggressive hike. Let's see what the RBNZ had to say. The Reserve Bank said that inflation remained too high and too persistent, while employment was beyond its maximum sustainable level, with the unemployment rate at a low 3.4%. The committee acknowledged that economic activity in the December quarter was lower than it anticipated. However, they said that demand continues to significantly outpace the economy's supply capacity, thereby maintaining pressure on annual inflation. If we have a look at this ANZ report from late 2022, we can see that the inflation rates for Australia and New Zealand are extremely similar. And even though there's been some slight moves since then, they still remain very closely aligned. So how on earth is New Zealand's interest rates risen to 5.25 when Australia is pausing at 3.6? Well, it comes down to central bank policy. It seems like the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is willing to do whatever it takes to smash down inflation and seems to be okay if that leads to a recession and very sharp falls in house prices. Compare that to Australia, which seems to want to do anything possible to avoid a recession and house prices remaining quite robust would help keep a strong economy. So who's right? Will New Zealand's decisive action pay dividends in the future? Will Australia once again get behind the inflation curve? One thing that I've definitely noticed, New Zealand seems to be much more interested in trying to approve house housing affordability. So in that case, I don't think they mind if house prices continue declining. Whereas Australia seems to want to keep house prices high at all costs. And maybe that's because the entire Australian economy is dependent on a strong housing market, which they may well regret one day because we're already seeing many cracks in the never-ending house price rise policy. When you start seeing many renters being pushed onto the streets, you just might have to rethink things. So in the current relationship between New Zealand and Australia, New Zealand definitely has the big kahunas. While Australia is looking more like one of these. So here's how interest rates are looking. And as you can see here, New Zealand is miles in front of every other developed nation, being the first central bank to raise the cash rate above 5%. Aggressive Kiwis sure know how to take action. When you consider that New Zealand's house prices were already crashing the most out of any other country, this latest rate rise is just going to accelerate house price declines and could even lead to a housing collapse. So far, New Zealand's house prices have fallen around 16% from their ultimate peaks, which is a very significant decline, especially for anyone who bought near those peaks, because now they're potentially in a negative equity situation, which can be disastrous. Now, because New Zealand has such expensive housing and they only provide short-term fixed rate loans, mortgage rates have a massive impact on home borrowing capacity. As you can see, mortgage interest rates have really surged and with this latest rise taken 
rank them above 7%. Now consider a city like Auckland where the median house price is above 1 million. When rates were near zero, it was easy to borrow a large amount which ended up creating a housing bubble. But now that mortgage rates have risen so sharply so quickly, the amount that home buyers can borrow has been drastically reduced. And this is one of the major factors that will ensure house prices will continue declining because sellers might want over a million for their property but many home buyers just won't be approved by the bank to be able to afford those properties and also many home buyers won't want to loan their maximum amount for fear of further interest rate hikes so the sellers want this price buyers can only afford this price and with the current glut of properties on the market sellers are going to have to reduce their price to meet the buyers so this super size interest rate hike will be absolutely brutal for the New Zealand housing market. Add to the effect of ultra high interest rates, consumer confidence in New Zealand is plummeting. Asking the question, are you worse off financially than a year ago? More and more people are definitely saying that they are. And asking the question if it's a good or bad time to buy a major household item, this sentiment is at all time lows. Meaning the feeling from New Zealanders is worse now than any other time over the past 30 years. So if you add shocking consumer sentiment with ultra high mortgage rates what do you get housing smackdown so where to from here for the New Zealand housing market? Well housing supply continues to be at record levels and this latest interest rate hike could mean even higher housing supply because buyer demand has basically vanished. So as more and more properties come on the market and buyer demand falling, New Zealand has become a buyer's market. But the trouble is most buyers also aren't in a great financial position due to high inflation, high interest rates and a bad recession that New Zealand seems to be heading towards. Now considering the median price for houses was 680 before COVID hit and we're now sitting under 800 with everything we've discussed today I now expect house prices to keep declining back to those pre-COVID levels which means that all those speculative gains since COVID will be totally erased. Now the only thing that could change my prediction with everything that I know so far would be if the RBNZ started reducing interest rates over the next few months so the real kicker for New Zealand is the fact that the central bank seems more than happy for the country to go into recession and for house prices to continue declining in order to make sure that inflation is properly dealt with. And because of that, I think it's safe to say that we'll see further house price declines and those declines could well start accelerating. But as we know, anything can happen. But strap yourself in New Zealand, your housing market could be in for a massive smackdown. And I can't see the cows! I'm Bicker Constantinos. Woo!